Hi guys and welcome back to the channel. So today we have a new quadcopter. This is a micro quadcopter from Dytone and when I saw this I had to have it. I want to see how good it is and I've also purchased a frame and components to try to build a competitor. Hopefully around the same price or even cheaper. So let's go ahead and crack this guy open. Now this is the Dytone GTR 90. So as you can see right there the GTR 90. So let's go ahead and pop this guy open and it is very well packed i must say and it's, it's it's very nice in here so let's just pull the guy out right here see what else we got in there so it's a very nice package as you can see here and i've actually been looking at this for a while and what do we have here probably about not updating yeah so basically here i think what they're, what they're see they're using 6061 aluminum which is not the good aluminum so i highly recommend not to over tighten these stuff because they will strip i've had that happen on their bigger frames and uh, yeah so just be careful and here we're greeted with the diatone sticker and here's a replacement uh, i think for the internal part because this goes in something like this in the frame we'll figure it out right now so let's go ahead and take a look here let's see what's inside this box so we get a little lot of extra parts we got an xt30 connector uh some more spares plastic parts zip ties even a rubber band thing yeah, I think what this battery's held with a rubber band i think prop guards and some propellers now from i don't think these are going to be good props so we're going to be using our own props here so let's go ahead and take this guy out so you might want to be careful when you're taking this out because you don't want to cut any of the wires so i think the best thing to do is to cut them from down here right so let's just take a look at this because this has so much going on for it that it's just not even crazy like when you look at it your eye goes just everywhere so let's just admire its beauty first i mean it's just absolutely stunningly clean it's very very nice wow the soldering is very beautiful very clean the routing even the you know these little pieces here to hold the motor wires and stuff is just it's it's very nice and well thought out look at the vtx antenna how it's sticking out the back here uh that's not going to be getting in the way of your propellers anytime soon or i think braking this is absolutely insane i mean diatone you know the only problem is that you use very bad aluminum but other than that i mean your work is absolutely clean i mean and check this out you have your current sensor under the xt30 look at that it's just crazy you know that is just insane. Um, it's 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 an absolute beauty. However, unfortunately, I'm not going to be able to take it out for a flight for a couple more days. The weather here is absolutely terrible, but we can just take a look at everything and you know, all the components and how well it's put together. So as you can see here, we do have some Sunny Sky motors, and lately I have been, you know, the Edge Racing series has just been absolutely beautiful from Sunny Sky. However, I can't really speak about these just yet because I haven't even used them. So these are 1104, 6000 kV. So in theory, they should have pretty a pretty good amount of juice here. And uh, I'm going to actually be comparing this to the SPC GF90 or 95, I forgot which one it is, uh, just to get a nice little comparison here. And here they're using some kind of Runcam Micro clone. It does look like the same exact board that they're using. So I'm guessing this is a CCD camera here. And um, yeah, it is a CCD camera. The VTX, they're actually using a Team Black Sheep VTX. It's all the way on the bottom here. So that's gonna be pretty cool and pretty insane here. Um, it is using a super sensitive gyro, which is rated up to 32K. Uh, PID and gyro loop frequency, so that's going to be pretty uh, I'm actually going to be testing that. I'm just very curious how that's going to turn out to be Hopefully it's good. Hopefully we don't have any weird twitches or anything Now I don't know. I've read some people saying that you had these catch on fire on 4s We will test the 4s on this also see if it catches fire and uh, it'll be pretty interesting So as you can see there we have an OSD. Uh, I really like this flight controller to be honest. It's pretty nice actually All right, so the ESC in here is a BB2 chip, which is a DSHOT 600 ESC. It's not a BL Heli 32 ESC. I mean, if they had set up a BL Heli 32 ESC with telemetry, that this thing would have been an absolute beauty. It would have been a beast here. Um, I really like this like a lot, but I have a feeling this will break. Look how uh, flimsy that is a bit, but that's totally fine, I think. 
We'll see how well it's going to perform. I know that you're going to have some very hard crashes. It seems pretty light, actually. Let's actually get, get its weight here. So, 68 grams. That's very light. That's very good. So, but don't forget, this is without battery or propellers. So, this is without a battery or propellers. Um... I'm in love. It just looks so nice. I, I hope the camera is doing it justice. Now, you know, I have no idea how that's going to perform, but this is just insane, insanely beautiful. So they even prepare the wires here for you, for your S bus or your I bus. Hopefully, I think it's S bus they prepare it for. All right. So if you wanted to switch between PPM and S bus, it doesn't say anything about I bus, but we're obviously we're going to have to look for an open UART to install I bus. So let's just take a look here. And let's just have that stop shaking. Right there, you see it says PPM and S bus. Now, if you wanted PPM, what you have to do is you have to remove that solder from the S bus and bridge that middle one and that PPM right there together. And then you'll be able to use PPM off this white wire here. If you wanted S bus, obviously keep it that way. Now, let's just say you have a spectrum receiver and you know it takes 3.3 .3 volts. What you have to do is you have to remove that solder from right there and there should be two pads. And what you have to do is bridge the middle one and the left one here and that'll give you 3.3 .3 volt from this connector here. So let's take a look and see uh, if we wanted to connect iBus here. So let me go ahead and grab a tweezer so we can actually point places. And I'm looking at the diagram right now and let me just put it into correct orientation. So there we go. So there's the boot button right there. Here we have LEDs. So if you wanted to set up some LEDs, you would put them right there. Uh, the first one would be the LED signal. Then you would have five volts. So if, also, if you needed five volts for anything, you got it right there. And this one would be ground. So that's all good and done there. Now, if you take a look but down here, the first two pads down here, this one is VCC and the second one is ground. So this is direct power uh, from the battery you can actually take from these two right there. Now, if we move along to the uh, third and fourth, we would have UART6 and it would go RX6 and then TX6. So let's just double check this, okay? So the two big ones are the battery and then we start with the small one here. So in theory, well not in theory, in reality, this is RX6. So if you wanted, if you had an iBus, I would totally recommend you put your iBus right there on RX6 and you would enable serial RX for UART6 and you should be good to go, which is the third one from the left here if you're looking at the board like so. So the next one after is TX6, uh, which is this guy. And then what we have later or next on the step here, we do have a five volt and we do have a ground. And then we have RX3, TX3, another five volt, another ground. So you'd be able to, you know, you have two five volts here, so that's very good. So you would be able to set up your uh, iBus receiver right there. And look, SBus is already pretty much made for you right here if you needed it. So I think, you know, the, this is the inverted part, and this part will not be inverted. So you could actually run iBus. And let's take a look here now. All right. So, so and I think the pads go both ways, maybe. So let's take a look. All right, so we have the iBus ports here, completely done. And then we have video out, which is right there. That would be going to your um, VTX. And then up here, what we have is we have TX3, which is audio. Uh, that doesn't make sense. Maybe, maybe smart audio, that's what they meant there. They could use that as a smart audio. So let's just move these a little bit out of the way. Or this thing might have audio, I don't know. Is it soldered on? Yeah, I think I, I think it is smart audio. So after after a video out, it's smart audio. And then we also have another, which is, it's basically TX3, but they're calling it AUD. So yeah, that's why I think it's smart audio. So it's TX3. So TX3 is actually possibly controlling the VTX down there. I could be wrong, but we will test this once we go out for a flight. Um, after that, we have and then we have obviously video in and another ground and a five volt up here, which is what it's giving the camera. So, I mean, it's pretty nice actually. It's it's a very nice little board. I really like it and it is soft mounted and it should be soft mounted because it's using such a sensitive gyro. Um, so you need you know to have everything soft mounted as much as possible here. And another thing what you can do is you can even remove these possibly. I don't know how small the frame is here, but if you were to remove these right here, you would actually save a lot more weight. 
And uh, what I recommend doing once you keep flying this after your second pass, go over and check over all the screws. Um, usually in micros that are pre-built, the screws tend to come off. And you know, just once, you know, one motor coming off could ruin your whole quad. It could rip things out of the pads. It could actually rip the pad. So it's very sensitive and it's something that you should definitely uh, keep checking. And as you can see here, you know, the camera is adjustable so that you get some pretty steep angle. Look at that. That's just crazy. So that's that's very good to see. I really like that. Um, I feel like something is touching now when I'm doing that. Yeah, there's something catching. What's catching? Okay, so it's it's this part of the uh, camera here. So it's part of the PCB camera. It's totally fine. You can just trim that off with a exacto knife or something. So it's pretty cool actually. Um, I really like this. I mean, it's light. It looks absolutely sexy. Um, it's so tiny. It's a two inch quadcopter, by the way. This is a little micro and it takes up to a four as they're stating. So that's very good to see. And the overall execution is just beautiful, like very beautiful. Um, the carbon looks very nice over here. It's very, very thin as you can see here. Let's see the arms here. The bottom plate's pretty thick and that's very good to see. Uh, I could totally see this coming off. So you probably have one of these come off, these white things come off sooner or later and just have some tape or zip ties with you uh, so you don't lose these. Or you can just remove them and put tape instead. Instead of having a wire come up, just get sliced off. And if it pulls, if the wire gets sliced off, that's not a problem, you could always resolder it. But where the problem is, is if when it sliced off, it didn't slice off and it actually pulled the wire and once it pulled the wire, it actually ruined the connection between the wire and the motor. Then that motor is done with you, really. It's, it's a pain to actually fix something like that. Uh, most people won't be able to do it. Some people would, but it's just it won't feel the same. Um, so, yeah, you would end up needing a whole new motor. And I don't know if you could still find, if you could find these motors at the current moment of time, um, as spares you could purchase. I don't know if it's still available or it's available just yet. But, um, yeah, take that into consideration. So I see something here. Or am I just tripping? It looks like a little gap in the in the qual in the. Yeah, there it is a gap. Is that on purpose gap? So can you guys see that? Is it two pieces? So that is. I think it's two pieces. Maybe is it? Yeah, it looks like two pieces. So it looks like two pieces of the frame right here. Both of them have that same thing, so that's pretty interesting. I do have the frame, I haven't opened it yet, but we will open it on the next video. But overall, I mean, this thing is just beauty, absolute beauty. It's very nice. So, actually, what I'm planning on building with this guy is I'm gonna use this new Cadex camera, I think it'll be pretty cool. And uh, hopefully we'll take them at the same time. So this way we could do two of them uh, at the same time when we go fly. We can do two maidens at the same time. So I'm planning on using this camera. I think this camera will fit. Um, it just it look, look at that. It looks sexy. Uh, however, this camera, the lens is a little bit nicer because it's smaller. But that'll fit beautiful right there. So I'm going to be using this guy. Um, I really want to try this camera. It's supposedly a 1,200 TVL line. So it's just pretty insane. And for flight controller we're going to use this flight controller the f4 nano pro corner the omnibus so this is going to be pretty interesting it does have osd and we're going to use this bill heli 32 escs i'm actually currently trying to debug it to figure out if i could access telemetry off this guy because we do have current sensing on this little micro esc which is so awesome i'm very excited for this one this build is going to probably be coming up next after the frame review and overall that's all i could really say it looks very nice it's pretty light uh, the overall build quality looks beautiful. Um, it should be pretty simple to set up. And if you need to set it up, you could just use one of the TX pads, RX pads on the bottom here. And you could just take the power from these wires if you needed to. And you should be good to go. So overall, I mean, 170 bucks. Uh, so far looking at it, just by looking at it, it just it, it's very nice. It's very beautiful. But beauty doesn't mean anything really until we take it out for a fly and see how well it performs. And how well it's uh it's going to last and um and uh, we'll see what's, what's going to happen so 
Well, that's it guys. So that's really gonna cool it for this video. I'm sorry there's no flight footage just yet. The weather is very terrible. And um we will be taking I have a lot of frames to be taken out for maidens and we'll be doing that very soon. And that's it guys. So I really hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you guys have any questions or any suggestions, feel free to let me know. And I will see you next time. See you guys. Take care.